Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a really great box of piano repertoire by a pianist you may not have heard of. It's Lauren Hollander. Now, Lauren Hollander was another one of those really fine American pianists from the generation around the 50s and 60s and 70s in that era. And you know who the others were. I mean, there was Gary Grafman and Fleischer and, 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 and you know, people like that. And they were really, really good. I mean, Byron Janis and, uh, I mean, Van Cliburn was, of course, the most famous one. But he really, really played well. He was a wonderful artist, a sensitive artist. And he didn't make a big concert career for himself. He was more interested, I think, in teaching and in bringing music to the rest of the world. He played in high schools. He, 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 was, he was a real ambassador for classical music, for piano music, and a wonderfully sensitive artist. He's still around. Um, he's sort of retired now, although I checked his website, and he still has a list of concertos and things that he plays. The last time I saw him perform was in the late 70s. I, I was in college then in Baltimore, and I saw him perform an amazingly fabulous Sasson Egyptian concerto, his piano concerto number five, with the Baltimore Symphony in Commissiona. And I remember seeing that performance, and especially the finale where he was going like gangbusters. You know, it's just thrillingly exciting. And I was thinking to myself, boy, where has this guy been? He's really, really rocking. He's a terrific, terrific artist. But there were never very many recordings. There's one on Naxos of the Copeland Piano Concerto. His repertoire choices were a little quirky, which is great and interesting. And the wonderful thing about this box is that it does have interesting repertoire in it that you're not going to find anywhere else, and or some anyway. And so let's go through it. There are eight CDs. Um, it's on RCA. And let's see what's inside, shall we? It's a real treat. I have to tell you, I was very excited to get this and listen to some of the stuff that I hadn't heard before and realize just how good he, he really, really is. I mean, he's still around, so he still is really good. And uh, it's exciting, really exciting. So first, we have Discovering the Piano, A Guide to Piano Playing. It's, what, 16 favorites for students of all ages. And this is just a little collection, but it's a very nicely put together collection. I mean, I said in talking about the the Kyung Hwa Chung Warner recordings, I'm not really a fan of violin sniglets, but I am a fan of piano sniglets. I like little piano sniglets if they're well done. And this has got all kinds of stuff. You've got The Flight of the Bumblebee and Andalutha by Granados and Schubert and Mendelssohn's Venetian Gondola Song and Chopin's Revolutionary Etude and Paderewski's Minuet and the Ritual Fire Dance and Liszt's Lebestraum and Beethoven and, and Brahms and DBC's Clear to Loon and the Chopin C sharp minor waltz and, 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 and oh my gosh, what else is in here? Beethoven's for Elise and the Minuet in G and Mozart's, you know, the first movement of his, you know, do, 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 da, da, you know, Tertial 545. I think that's what it is. Is it 545? Yeah. And then let's see a Bach two part invention and some Schumann album from the young and Griegs and Dietrich's dance and the Chopin butterfly etude. Oh, it just goes on and on. There's there's 22 actually sniglets on you know in this particular coupling this particular CD. They're all wonderfully played and it's just, it's just fun to hear them one after the other. It's a great disc. I hate to say it for background listening, but for doing other things or just you know enjoying a little music when you're relaxing at home. It's lovely. And then there's a disc here called Polonaise. Don't ask me why. It's got a Chopin Polonaise, the A flat major, the heroic, and his scherzo number two, and the Liszt Hungarian Rhapsody number six, and the Mephisto Waltz. It's a really good Mephisto Waltz. Oh, it really hops. It's very Mephistophelian. Yeah. And had a Brahms intermezzo and the Rhapsody in G minor, and the Rachmaninoff Prelude in C sharp minor, which is a lot better than I used to play it. I actually played that piece. Boy, is it fun. Boy, is it a pain in the neck for the left hand. Ask anybody. You have to have a left hand like the size of, a, of, a, of an anaconda to get around those octave things at the bottom. You know, you have to, oh, it's, it's, it's so much fun. It's really fun to play. And, oh, and this is CD3, it's great. It features Norman Delojoyo. Norman Delojoyo is a good composer. 
really good American quasi-neoclassicist composer, almost transcendental in some ways. He had some really interesting like religious pieces or religiously inspired pieces. Just, I like him. And here we have the fantasy and variations for piano and orchestra. It's a two-movement concerto length, like 22-minute piece, that has two movements, a fantasy and then a set of variations. And this is the premiere recording and only recording. I don't know, maybe there's another one. I don't know. It's with Leinsdorf in Boston. And it's really, really, really wonderful. So it's great to have. And it's coupled with a really fine Ravel G major concerto, a performance probably most of you don't know but is well worth hearing, beautifully sensitive and not sloppy and slovenly and not one of those, you know, tempy, pulled around like taffy kind of jobs. It's really, really good. And the Boston Symphony, of course, is the great French orchestra. So you're not going to get a better accompaniment. It's wonderful. Then we've got Prokofiev, the premier recording, I think it was, of the Fifth Piano Concerto with Leinsdorf again in Boston marvelous performance and not a work that you hear every day outside of Prokofiev piano concerto cycles, of course, and the Prokofiev first violin concerto with Eric Friedman, who's also fabulous. So, uh, you know, it's a great disc. It was always a great disc. It really was. It was how I first heard the Prokofiev fifth piano concerto, and I like the fifth. You know, people think Prokofiev like took it took time off after the third, because the fourth is for left hand alone, and it's a very strange work. It really is, but the fifth is good. It's it's real vintage Prokofiev stuff, even though it's late and you know past the time when he was supposed to write vintage Prokofiev stuff. It's a wonderful piece. Of course, the classic recording of that is the Richter, but I mean this isn't any worse. <laughs> it's just as good. It really is. And then the Cacciatorian Piano Concerto. This was a Hollander specialty. It's a wonderful performance. Hollander said of it, or says of it in the book, that he felt that this was really a typical sort of virtuoso, go for the gusto performance. But later he redeveloped his conception of the piece and sees it in a much deeper way, which is really something to be said for, you know, talking about Cacciatorian that way. It's nice that he feels that way about Cacciatorian. I would, of course, be curious to hear how his rethinking would go. But in the meantime, we have this really dynamic and splendid performance of a still fairly rarely heard piece. Um, again, that isn't done by like Russian people for, you know, on Russian labels or with Russian conductors. or No, not at all. It's, it's Andre Previn and the Royal Phil. And uh, boy, is it, Again, it's, isn't this interesting? It's not the same old, same old. That's the point, right? I mean, why would you want to get another box of piano stuff if it's just the same stuff? Some of the solo things, yeah, they are. He had to, you know, push the right buttons. But these concertos, I mean, Prokofiev five, Norman Della Joyo, Cacciatoria, it's, it's not the usual. I'm so happy. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff that really appeals to me. And you get the Ernest Bloch Scherzo Fantasque as the coupling. Oh, wow. If only he'd done the Concerto Symphonique. Oh, gosh. The Bloch Concerto Symphonique. Mr. Hollander, you're out there. Look at the record industry today. They're looking for great pianists. And remember, Lauren Hollander was tutored by Horowitz. Horowitz, come on, you can do this. I mean, if they, you know, 90-year-old pianists who haven't been recording lately, do the Block Concerto Symphonique. Some label will pick it up, and you can do it. I know you can do it. Please, we need it. And you're just the guy to do it. That would be fun. I know he's having, like, a great time, you know, doing other things now, like ham radio. I mean, they talk about his hobbies in here. I mean, there's ham radio and parasailing or bungee jumping or I don't know there's other stuff in here that he's doing and I oh I just wish that he would pick up some of this other stuff too like Bloch's Concerto Symphonique boy would that have been great then there's a really marvelous pictures in an exhibition um, with another Rachmaninoff Prelude in C sharp minor can't have too many of those maybe it's the same one I don't know I didn't look too hard sorry and the Prokofiev Toccata in D minor which is predictably brilliant, a Beethoven Tempest Sonata with, as they say in the booklet, some eccentric tempi, which worked perfectly well, um, Bach, Je Jesus Bleibet Meine Freude, Jesus Joy of Man's Desiring, from there, and uh, Brahms Intermezzo, and Schumann's Arabesque, 
at Arabesca, which is lovely. And then we've got the Modern Music series of Leon Kirchner. Leon Kirchner's Lily with Diana Hoagland soprano and the Columbia Chamber soloist. And here, Kirchner is the, is the pianist and conductor. And Lauren Hollander, our good friend Lauren Hollander, is the Celesta player. He's the virtuoso Celestist, which shows you what, what good sport he was. That's really very, very nice of him. It really is, boy, this has got some collection of, of performers in it. You've got Nobuko Imai on the viola and Richard Stoltzman on clarinet and, you know, absolutely great. And it's coupled with um, Kirchner's second string quartet, I think, is in here, right? Yeah, that's what it is, the second string quartet. Again, it's just what the original disc was. And so that's really nice to have. And that's it, eight CDs of kind of unusual stuff by a kind of unusual pianist who deserves um, a lot of attention. And he deserves a lot more attention than he got in his lifetime, but that was his choice. And I respect that choice. I think it's really wonderful if you can leave behind a sort of boutique assortment of CDs of unusual excellence and uniformly high quality with some really personal and, and individual repertoire that other people haven't done. I, I just like this. This is a real collector's edition, but it's not the kind of thing that's going to stay in print. I, I mean that for, you know, any length of time because of how unusual it is and how Hollander is not a household word. So get it while you can. Be smart. Oh, and by the way, the notes are by ClassicsToday.com's very own Jed Distler which is why I'm covering this, and Jed is not. <laughs> um, they're very good, by the way. So it's really, really a, a wonderful production, and, and I'm happy to welcome it back to the realm of the discographic living. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.